when we need to choose a diagnostic test to evaluate patients with conditions such as cervical radiculopathy, lumbar disc herniation, or lumbar spine stenosis, what test should we consider to identify the cause of the conditions? Why should we choose one test over another? To answer these questions, we need to know the diagnostic accuracy of a test. This is also known as validity of a test. The diagnostic accuracy of a test is the degree to which the test can accurately identify the cause of the conditions. In clinical situations, we determine if a test is accurate by determining if it can discriminate between patients with and without a condition. We use two basic measures to determine the accuracy, sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity and specificity are usually expressed in percentages. The higher percentages, the better sensitivity or specificity. They are computed by comparing a new test to a reference standard. A reference standard is the best available measure so far to find the condition, and therefore assumed to give us a true result. Sensitivity is like a test's ability to identify patients with the condition. Sensitivity is calculated by dividing the number of true cases identified by the test by all the positive cases confirmed by the reference standard. A test with high sensitivity will correctly identify most of the people who have the condition and have few false negatives. False negatives are people who have the disease but test negative. Specificity, on the other hand, is like a test's ability to correctly identify patients without the condition. Specificity is calculated by dividing the number of true negative cases identified by the test by all the negative cases confirmed by the reference standard. A test with high specificity will correctly identify most of the people who do not have the disease and have few false positives. False positives are people who do not have the disease but test positive. A sensitive test will rarely miss patients with the condition. If a sensitive test shows a negative test result, it helps rule out the condition. A specific test will rarely misclassify people without the condition as having the condition. If a specific test shows a positive test result, it helps rule in the condition. A test cannot be perfectly sensitive and specific at the same time. A test with high sensitivity will typically have lower specificity and vice versa. It's up to us to choose a sensitive or specific test based on what we are looking to accomplish, either rule in or rule out condition. For example, if we use a test to screen for cancer, we should choose a sensitive test. Since cancer can be life-threatening, we need a test that will rarely miss people who actually have cancer so that we can treat them in a timely manner. Using a highly sensitive test for cancer, people who receive a negative test can rest assured knowing that they do not, in fact, have cancer. Therefore, screening with a highly sensitive test first helps us to minimize the risk of missing cases. However, in choosing a sensitive test, we should be aware that we are likely to end up with a high number of false positive cases. That is, people who do not have cancer that are identified as positive cases using our test. Further tests can be done to identify people 
who actually have cancer. To do this, we use a test that is more specific. Specific tests are more useful in clinical scenarios where there is a need to minimize the number of false positive cases. If there is a condition that is not life-threatening and for which there is no effective treatment, we do not want false positive cases and potentially waste resources. We will want a specific test. The specific test can result in false negatives, which are positive cases identified as negative cases. Let's consider the diagnosis of a cervical radiculopathy as an example. A cervical radiculopathy is not life-threatening and can be effectively managed. The commonly used tests to evaluate a cervical radiculopathy include the neck distraction test and the upper limb tension test. A systematic review by Rubinstein et al. reported the sensitivity and specificity of the two tests. Neck distraction test, sensitivity 44%, specificity 90%. Upper limb tension test, sensitivity 97%, specificity 22%. In this example, our first go-to test might be the neck distraction test because the specificity of the test is 90%. If the test is positive, we can ruin the condition. In other words, if a person has a positive neck distraction test, we can be confident this person has a cervical radiculopathy. However, the sensitivity of the test is very low. If the result of the test is negative, we cannot be confident the person does not have a cervical radiculopathy. In other words, the person still may or may not have a cervical radiculopathy. If this is the case, we can apply another test, the upper limb tension test. If we conduct this test and the result is negative, we can be confident the person does not have a cervical radiculopathy because the sensitivity of the upper limb tension test is high. In summary, if the neck distraction test is negative and upper limb tension test is negative, we can be confident to rule out a cervical radiculopathy. From this example, we can see that there are no perfect tests. A combination of patient's characteristics, health history information, and diagnostic tests are needed to more accurately determine the presence or absence of a condition.